The Mondlaker Model 1895 rifle was adopted by the Austro-Hungarian Army in 1895. The cavalry carbine and short rifle were adopted shortly thereafter. They were used through World War I and continued to see service in Austria, Hungary, and several other countries post-war, to include rear echelon use during World War II. Originally chambered in 8x50mm rimmed, the vast majority were arsenal rebuilt and rechambered to the newer 8x56mm rimmed in the 1930s. The story of this rifle starts in Budapest, Hungary, where it was produced. The make and model are marked on the top of the receiver. The Budapest marking indicates it was made by FEG, located in Budapest, and part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire at the time. M95, an abbreviation for model 1895, is the model and there was no differentiation in markings between variations such as rifles, short rifles, and carbines. Other features of the rifle must be used to identify these. Based upon the sights, this rifle was originally produced as a model 1895 short rifle or carbine. The rear sight is an original short rifle or carbine sight indicated by the highest graduation being 24. Rear sights were often replaced when rechambered to match the new caliber. This one was not. It is graduated from 300 to 2400 Schritt. This is an obsolete German unit of measure equal to about 0.75 meters and translates to step. In addition to the rear sight, having the front sight mounted directly to the barrel indicates this barrel was originally short rifle or carbine length and is not a rifle cut down later as many of the rifles were. Front sights were attached with bands on cut down barrels. This rifle has the tallest of three front sight variations. The N95s were produced by two different manufacturers, FEG in Hungary and another OEWG located in Steyr, Austria. They each marked many of their parts. Parts made in Steyr are marked with a K and parts made in Budapest are marked with a R. Here you can see the bolt of this rifle has parts from both manufacturers indicating it has been rebuilt at some point. The rifle serial number was originally marked on the barrel, receiver, and stock. The barrel and receiver serial numbers are marked on the left side. Both these serial numbers match and have the same stamping style, indicating an original barrel. The serial number on the stock is marked on the right side. This one does not match the receiver and barrel and has a strikeout line through it, indicating a replacement stock. As the rifle was put together, it would have been proofed. These two symbols, which are Austrian eagle crests on the barrel shank and receiver, are Austrian proof marks. When the rifle was accepted by the Austro-Hungarian Imperial Army, it received an acceptance mark. The original acceptance mark has been stamped over, but is a WN with an Austrian eagle that is covered, followed by a 15. This acceptance mark indicates it was accepted near Vienna in 1915, the number being the last two digits of the acceptance here. The S Lion 11, stamped on top and perpendicular to the Imperial acceptance mark, is a Czech acceptance mark. Czechoslovakia was formed after the end of World War I and received these rifles from Austria in 1919 to 1922. The number corresponds to Military District 11. Moving to the right side of the receiver, near the Austrian proof mark, is a line stamp. This is a Czech line stamp and is a proof mark as Czechoslovakia would have reproofed the rifles upon their receipt. Back on top of the receiver, the large S over the chamber indicates the rifle has been converted from the original 8x50mm rimmed cartridge to the new 8x56mm rimmed cartridge in Steyr, Austria. 
This conversion started in 1930 in Steyr, thus making the new designation for the rifle AM95-30. Czechoslovakia never converted the rifles to 8x56R though. It is likely this rifle was surplus to Bulgaria in the late 1930s before it was rechambered. Features on the stock and barrel bands also indicate Bulgarian ownership. During rebuilding, Bulgaria fitted the rifles with side sling swivels only. This involved removing rear bottom sling swivels, then filling the hole in the stock with a wooden plug, and also replacing the front sling swivel with a washer, both of which can be seen on this rifle. It appears the stock on this rifle is a cut down rifle stock. The area between the two barrel bands is more roughly cut than the rest of the stock, and there is a filled hole and line from where the rear rifle barrel band and screw would have been. Bulgaria is known to have done this during rebuilding in the late 1930s and early 1940s. Ultimately, this rifle was imported into the United States. There is an import mark on the bottom of the barrel, just in front of the handguard. The bottom of the text lines is very light, if there at all. The top line is Austrian M95 8x56R. And the second line is the abbreviation for the importer. Century Arms International, while they were in St. Albans, Vermont. The ATF did not require import marks until 1986, and Century Arms moved from St. Albans in 2000, so this rifle would have been imported sometime in that period. Every firearm has a history, and some of this rifle story has been deciphered through its markings and features. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting or helpful, go ahead and give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to support the channel, a link to our Patreon page is in the description. For more information on this rifle and others, head on over to historyandfirearms.com.